that the, this war uh, has five clear cut goals. And the first one is to eliminate the military capabilities of Hamas and jihadic Islam in the, in the Gaza Strip. No other way. We cannot live with such threat along our borders. Oh, we've been keeping you across all of the latest developments in the Israel-Gaza war. One of those uh, factors at play, one of those unknowns, is at what point, um, if ever, uh, Israel decides to launch a ground incursion into Gaza. Um, on the line, I think, at the moment, is Yair Golan, who is a former major general in the Israeli Defence Forces, someone who has uh, re- signed up as a reservist, uh, one of many hundreds of thousands of people who, who has done so. Uh, Mr Golan, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello. Good to hear good, from you. Good noon. Thank yes. you very much for, for being here. Um, we were saying a little bit earlier on, on the attack on the 7th of October, um, when Hamas attacked various communities and, and civilians uh, in Israel, you were one of those people who, who heard about the, the news first thing and, and, and you got out and you managed to, well, help some people in, in a kibbutz. Tell us what happened. Well, uh you know, from early morning, I started to understand that uh, something is really, really strange uh, is happening there in the South, which is really un- unusual. I'm a well-experienced soldier for many, many years. And this is and, and, and this event was really unique. So, you know, I, I put on my old uniforms and went straight away to the headquarters of the Home Front Command, mm. a command I uh, commanded previously uh, for more than three years. And I asked there the commanding officer of the Home Front Command to be his personal envoy to the South, uh, because the picture was truly unclear. Um, immediate, immediate, immediately after, I... I uh, went there and uh, discovered that the battle in the district headquarters of the Home Front Command was over. I helped a bit, uh, you know, to reorganize the troops there. Mm. Then I got a phone call from my sister and she asked me whether I can take people out of the combating area. I look at the map and it was quite reasonable to go there. I thought I thought at that time that no one else is, you know, ready to do it because, you know, the, it, it was quite a mess mm. concerning uh, command and control structure. Uh, so I went with my car uh, through the fields and I managed to find three, uh, three guys hidden in the bushes, guys who uh, were escaped from the Nova Festival. Yes. And uh, if, on, if, if on the question the way now... out, I got another phone call and I took another two guys and then I got another phone call. So you you understand yeah. that the picture that was the that was the schedule for that day. Mm. And if the question now um for the Israeli military and people like you I guess as well who is now a reservist is is what to do if the government's stated aim is to destroy Hamas about whether to go into Gaza or not. Um, the received wisdom at the moment seems to be that the US is is pushing Israel to hold off a ground incursion in Gaza yeah. to allow more time to negotiate hostage releases. Is that something that you, you agree with? For the moment, it should be off the table. Well, I would say that, you know, without going into operational considerations, which are... You know, I I do not I don't know know them right now because I'm not in the yeah. you know the supreme headquarters to understand you know the exact uh, intelligence and other yeah. considerations. I would say that uh, the this war uh, has five clear cut goals. And the first one is to eliminate the military capabilities of Hamas and jihadic Islam in the, in the Gaza Strip. No other way. We cannot live with such threat along our borders. Mm. Uh, the second uh, goal is to prevent any building power process in the future. So uh, the Gaza Strip should be from here to eternity a demilitarized zone. Uh, the third goal is to free all our hostages. And uh, that's also absolutely clear. And maybe this is the first goal we need to mm. achieve right away. 
because their life is under threat. Uh, we are talking about more than 200 uh, people that yeah. uh, civilians, mostly civilians, and we want them back as soon as possible. Uh, the fourth goal is to prevent uh, Hezbollah or Iran or any other Shiite militias in the region from uh, intervention in the conflict, in the, in the war. Um, and the fifth uh, goal is to recover uh, our settlements, our villages and kibbutzim and towns around the Gaza Strip uh, and make them the most uh, prosperous, flourishing uh, region in Israel. So, so, so you're saying, because that's, that's one it's of the questions, isn't it, about what to do after any kind of ground incursion or, or getting rid of um, Hamas in, in the Gaza Strip. You think after that point, um, Israel should move to, to return Jewish settlements to the Gaza Strip? Well, if I understand, you know, uh, looking at the military operation in the Gaza Strip, um, I, I'm absolutely sure that the IDF has all capabilities and all the right people, you know, commanders and soldiers and NCOs uh, to conduct this operation in a successful manner. Mm. I have no doubt about it. I have no hesitation about it. And we need to understand that achieving uh, our goals, as I mentioned, it's almost impossible. Well, it's impossible for only from the air by aerial bombardments. It's, it's just impossible because we need to think the following. We have a uh, upper Gaza Strip and beneath we have uh, the subterrain mm. uh, of the Gaza Strip, which is probably the most well-developed subterrain in the world. And it might be possible and to you destroy cannot, you groups cannot like... cannot destroy it only from the air. Yes. And we cannot use it as a as an opportunity to capture as much as possible militant and terrorists inside the subterranean without going inside the Gaza Strip. So I, I would say I, I you know it doesn't matter whether we are going to conduct it tomorrow morning, two weeks from now, or two months from now, or two years from now. But we need to do it, you know, somewhere in the future in order to achieve our military goal. Uh, OK, but it's one thing to achieve your military goals. But, but just finally, do you think that it's possible to do that whilst also protecting civilian life? Um, president Obama, the former US president, is the latest person uh, to write recently saying that any Israeli military strategy that ignores the human costs could ultimately backfire do you think that enough consideration and care is being uh, given on the israeli side to civilian life amidst all of this yes no doubt that you know that uh, this is a very important consideration we need to keep the life of civilians uh, as a prominent goal for this uh, for this campaign no doubt and we are going to do whatever is needed including, you know, endangering uh, our soldiers in order to keep civilians' life. Uh, you know, the moral aspect of this war is extremely important. Unfortunately, Hamas and the Jihadic Islam use, you know, uh, civilians as a human shield. And we need to acknowledge that. Uh, we ask all civilians in Gaza City to go south of the Gaza var of the Gaza uh, River, uh, you know, to concentrate themselves in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, in order to to uh, to, to to prevent them from, you know, being under de un under life danger. So th this is uh, absolutely clear. Okay, uh, we'll leave it. I can tell you that from my personal experience, we are going to do whatever is whatever is needed in order to minimize mm. the number of civilian casualties uh, because this is not a you know to, to hit them it's it's not a it's not a goal of the war certainly okay. not yeah Gollum, we'll have to leave it there but thank you very much for your time this morning um he's a former major general in the israeli defense forces and uh, a current um reservist